This question you asked in gate 23 of electronics. This is from control system subjects and related to the frequency response topic. The question is the open loop transfer function of a unity negative feedback system is given as GS where K T1 T2 are positive constants. The phase crossover frequency in radian per second is. So what is the phase crossover frequency of this transfer function? So how do we calculate the phase crossover frequency or what is the definition of phase crossover frequency? The, the frequency at which the phase angle of the transfer function become minus 180 degree, we say that particular frequency, the phase crossover frequency. In other words, so G of J omega, okay, if I calculate its phase angle at a special frequency called phase crossover frequency omega PC, so it happens to be minus 180 degree. So what I'll be doing is, I'll first write the, you know, phase angle information of this transfer function and I'll equate it to minus 180 degree, okay. So the root of omega, what I'll get, that is nothing but my phase cross of frequency. So I can write the G of J omega as K divided by J omega, this is 1 plus J omega T1, this is 1 plus J omega T2. So what is the phase angle of this one? Phase angle of this one is, so this J omega, this will contribute minus 90 degree. And then these are the denominator term, right? So each of this will contribute tan mass of omega T1 because you have, these are in denominator. So if you write the expression, you will get a negative sign. So minus 90, then minus of tan inverse omega T1 minus of tan inverse omega T2. This is what is the phase angle of this particular transfer function. <clears throat> and this should be equated to minus 180 degree. So this implies minus 180 degree is equals to minus 90 minus tan inverse of omega t1 minus tan inverse of omega t2. This equation you have to solve and you have to get the value of omega. So that will be your omega pc. So if you multiply minus 1 both sides so these all terms will be positive so you get this is 180 degree minus 90 which is 90 degree is equals to tan inverse of omega t1 plus tan inverse omega t2 this is like tan inverse a plus tan inverse b which is tan inverse of a plus b which is tan inverse of omega t1 plus omega t2 divided by 1 minus a b 1 minus omega t1 multiplied by omega t2 because tan inverse of a plus b is tan inverse of a plus b divided by 1 minus ab. So this implies tan 90 degrees if you take tan both sides. So this happens to be omega t1 plus omega t2 divided by 1 minus omega square t1 t2. But what is tan 90? Tan 90 nothing but infinite. And you are expecting this ratio should be infinite. In other words, we expect the denominator should be 0. If the denominator is 0, the ratio is infinite. So the condition what you need is 1 minus omega square t1 t2 is equals to 0. So omega square t1 t2 is equals to 1 or omega is equals to 1 by square root of t1 t2. In fact, this omega is nothing but equals to your phase cross of frequency which is 1 by square root of t1 t2. So this is a standard data actually students while teaching in class. So this transfer function and even 1 plus st3. So for such transfer function, we have, these are the standard, standard data actually, right? So uh, these are quite frequently being used while dealing with some questions. So these are kind of pet model questions or we have kind of memorized. But if you want to know how it is happening, so this is what the simple maths you have to solve, which is one by square root of T1, T2, which is given option A. So A is the right answer for this question. Very simple, straightforward, general model question asked. This question is asked in gate 23 of electronics. This is from control system subjects and from steady state error concept. The question is a closed loop system is shown in the figure where k greater than 0, alpha greater than 0. The steady state error due to a ramp input rs equals to alpha by s square is given by. Okay. So it is a standard uh, unity negative feedback structures and the input is it's a ramp input rs is alpha s square so in the laplace domain it is alpha s square then i can write its corresponding time domain function r of t is equals to alpha t ut alpha t ut 
and because the input is ramp okay the steady state error which is denoted by ess is given by a by the velocity error constant which is kv so it is a divided by what is kv limit s tends to 0 s into g of s but what is this a by the way this a is nothing but your amplitude of or basically not amplitude the slope of this ramp function so as far as this question is concerned the slope of the ramp function is alpha so here in place of a so let me write this is alpha so this is your alpha so just we have to simplify this so the answer will be alpha divided by limit s tends to 0 s multiplied by g of s g of s is this open loop transfer function which is your k divided by s into s plus 2 so now this s and this s are being cancelled out now if you substitute s equal to 0 you get alpha whole divided by k by 2 so if you simplify this this is coming as 2 alpha by k right so 2 alpha by k if you check it out so this is given in option a and a should be the right answer for this problem so this is very simple and straightforward question right so just we have to use this formula and you have to simplify the simple maths answer is 2 alpha by k this question is asked in gate 23 of electronics this is from control system subjects and from block diagram reduction topic the question is in the following block diagram rs and ds are two inputs okay the output ys is expressed as ys equals to g1s rs plus g2s ds then g1s and g2s are given by if you see these are the options they have given with respect to g1s and g2s so these are the input rs ds and this is the output ys okay so if ys is expressed as linear combination with respect to rs and ds so what are those factors g1s and g2s one of the way to simplify this problem is uh, using superposition that is you first make ds equal to 0 then you can get ys to rs ratio then you make rs equal to 0 you will get ys to ds ratio so that is one of the way but there is one more simple way which i'd like to prefer in this case is this one i'll be manipulating this i'll be finding the signal at various points and then by using simple algebra we can easily get the answer so student if this is y then this is also your y if this is y and this this transfer function is h so this is your h and this is your y if this is y then this is also y and you see now to this summing point so input is r and this is y and there is a negative sign so if i ask you what is the signal at this point so this is definitely your r minus y now if you check this particular uh, summing point now okay so there are three inputs this one which is ds this one which is r minus y and this is hy so if i ask you what is the uh, signal at this point so uh, so r minus y so i have considered this one because there is a positive sign okay then plus d because this is d and it's a positive sign and then minus hy because it is hy and there is a negative sign so you get minus hy so now if i ask you what is your y i mean this output with respect to this input so you can see this is what is available at this point or you can say to this particular block this is the input so the output will be because we are dealing in the s domain so multiplication of this thing with gs so y equals to g multiplied by r minus y plus d minus hy so now just we have to simplify this so if you simplify this so you get y is equals to gr minus gy plus gd minus g h and y if you take y common you get 1 plus g plus gh this is equals to g r plus g d in other words i have taken this and this into other side i have taken y as common then you are left with g r plus z d so now if you check it out so this is your y is equals to g divided by 1 plus g plus g h multiplied by r plus g divided by 1 plus g plus g h multiplied by d so they are in s domain okay 
So this is what we got. And if you see in the question, Ys is given as, so what is Ys is given? Ys is given as G1R, I mean G1 of S into R of S plus G2 of S into D of S. So everywhere you can write this S S, okay? So just for, uh, uh, you know, simple representation, I have avoided it, but keeping in mind there in the S domain. So now if you make comparison of this expression with this expression, so that factor which is multiplied with R, that is G1S, and that factor which is multiplied with DS, that is your G2S. So if you compare, so this is what your G1S is, and if you compare, this is what your G2S is. So what is the conclusion? Conclusion is G1S are same as G2S and is given by G of S divided by 1 plus G of S plus GS HS. So this is what the answer is. You can check it out which option having this one. So G1S and G2S are same. GS by 1 plus GS plus GS HS. I think this is given option A. Okay, so they cannot be different. They cannot be different. In this case also, they are different. They cannot be different. They have to be same. In this case, they are same, but the last factor is GSHS expected. Here it is only HS. So this cannot be answered. So answer has to be definitely A. Okay, so you can use superposition or you can use uh, this simple manipulation. So the answer is A for this. This question is asked in gate 23 of electronics. This is from control system subjects and from body plot topic. The question is, the asymptotic magnitude body plot of a minimum phase system is shown in the figure. The transfer function of the system is given this one, where K, Z, P, A, B, C are positive constants. The value of A plus B plus C is what? Okay. So basically we have to find on each kernel frequency what has to be introduced whether it is pole or zero if it is pole or zero what is the order of that pole and zero to be introduced so based on that that abc is set and we have to find this abc so one thing we can see because the initial slope is minus 20 per decade from this we can conclude that it's a falling one right that means it indicates because the sign is negative so it indicates it is pole definitely at origin the initial slope it indicates the pole at origin. If it is having some, uh, you know, non-zero slope, indicates there are pole at origin if it is of negative sign. If it could have been plus 20 per decade, we would have said zero at origin. And because it is 20 dB, there is only one pole. If it is 40 dB, two pole. One pole contributes minus 20 dB. So if it is only one minus 20 dB, that means it indicates it is one pole. If it could have been minus 80, let's say, okay, then I'd have said four pole at origin. So one pole at origin. So if you compare, so here S to the power B. So B is equals to one. Next thing it at frequency omega one, the change in slope is plus 20 per decade. So change in slope, change in slope is zero minus minus 20. So that is 20 dB per decade. So it indicates at frequency omega one, there is one zero. Why I'm saying one zero? Because the change in slope is positive, not negative. If negative, it is pole. If it is positive, it is zero. So it indicates at this frequency omega one, one zero has to be introduced. Again, one zero introduce plus 20 dB slope. If it could have been change in slope would have been 60 dB per decade, I'd have said three zeros. If it is only 20 per decade, then it is one zero. That means I can say that this A factor is basically one. Now at this omega 2, what is the change in slope? So change in slope is, so here it is minus 40 dB and here it is 0. So minus 40 minus 0 is minus 40 dB. So at this frequency, the change in slope is minus 40 dB per decade. So because it is a negative sign, it indicates it is presence of pole and it is 40 dB. So each pole introduced minus 20. So two pole introduced minus 40. So two poles. So it means that the C factor is basically two here. C factor is basically two. So A plus B plus C. So this is definitely equals to two plus one plus one. So that happens to be four. So this answer is four for this. It's a very simple straightforward questions. Like uh, we, we know how to find the transfer function from a given uh, magnitude uh, plot, right? So instead of asking what is the exact transfer function, so qualitatively, how many poles and zero are introduced on different kernel frequency based on that this question is framed. So by observing the initial slope, we concluded there is one pole at origin. From there, we got B equals to one. 
Then at next kernel frequency, change in slope is positive. So we observe that this omega 1, there has to be 1, 0. So 1, 0 means the A factor is 1. Then at next kernel frequency, change in slope is minus 40 per decade. That means 2 poles. So 2 poles means this C factor is basically 2. So A is 1, B is 1, C is 2. So if you add all of this, so you are getting this as 4. So answer is 4 for this question.